Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today we have one of the most reactive pit bulls to ever come to the UCA. So this is a really interesting case because yes, it's one of the most reactive dogs we've ever seen, but it's also one of the quickest reactive dogs we've taken to not be reactive. So if you have a dog that's reactive on leash or off leash to people or dogs, this video is for you. I'm gonna showcase really easy steps on how to teach leash pressure and the leave it command to stop unwanted behavior. Do you, do you just use the flat uh, the flat collar usually, or do you have like a anything else? Um, they if the shelter sent us home with a problem. <laughs> Okay. 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 Alright, I'm just gonna see if this fits. This is just a slip collar. So you're gonna just wrap that right around, see if that fits. I'll throw this to you. Now has he always been good with you? You can Alright. Um why don't you uh We're gonna work together on this, okay? So you're gonna put this leash on his on his other collar. Oops, sorry. It's okay, no worries. Okay, so give me my leather leash. And come out of come out a little bit. Okay. And now you're just gonna hold on to the end of that leash for me. And I'm gonna control him, you're gonna be my backstop. So if I drop the leash and walk away, he's still attached to you. So I'm just gonna work him, and then you just try to let him out a little bit. Zamboni. Good boy. Good job. Good job. <clears throat> okay, you can uh, drop the leash now and then just, um, why don't you just go over anywhere. You don't have to sit down or anything. Just stay in. I just want to pay attention to him and focus a little bit. So, Zamboni, come here. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Good job. So I'm just <laughs> still being cautious with him because, um, you know, because he, he changed his behavior really quick, which means if he changed it good, I mean, he changed it quick for the better, he can change it again the other way. <clears throat> Zamboni, sit. Is he food motivated? Yes. Sit. Oh, good boy. Sit. Good job. Down. Down. Okay. Okay, break. Good boy. Good. Nicely done. Good boy. All right, any questions? Okay. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So um, my process, my thought process is this, is, um, you know, I don't, you know, this is primarily what I work with. It's what I deal with. It's what, I'm, it's what I love the most is just what you just saw, reactive dogs to not reactive dogs. Um, so and I, I don't pretend like I know everything that's going on all the time. Um, and so what I, my take on it is, come here, buddy. My take on it is, is... Like you said before, that there's probably some things that you're doing as a dog owner that sets him up to be that way. Yeah. And so for me, he's, he's doing this, right? And he's barking, he's barking, he's barking, he's coming at me. And you as a parent, if you will, um, if you're in charge of this animal and he's doing all the things bad that you don't like, and not only do you not like it, but other people obviously don't like that either. And you don't do anything to stop him from doing that. He will then continue to do it, yes. right? So I just put a, a piece of rope on him. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's literally like a, what we call a slip collar. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like a martingale collar with a little bit more pressure. Um, so it's a little safer because martingale collars are, are also double, they're dual collars for flat collars. So a lot of times they're sitting on, like his, like that's a flat collar where it sits, low by his chest, no control at all. It's just for his tags, which is great. That's every dog owner should have a dog collar on like that. But with the slip collar, you're able to customize it to put it high and tight where originally like where you wanted to put it was low and I said no put it up and that's what we're doing with the control so nothing really is is causing him any aversive um, I shouldn't say nothing I mean it is it, it, it's aversive to a point of like it is causing him discomfort from pressure so he's pulling he's like hey knock it off let me go um, so it is a little pressure to him so my point is this is if he's doing all of that behavior and we're not doing anything about it to effectively and efficiently stop it, then it's always going to continue. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I know that you worked with another trainer prior that did just a lot of positive reinforcement training. So like watch this here. Hey, leave it. Leave it. Good. Hey, sit. Sit. Good boy. Good. He goes, he's in a, he's in a, <clears throat> you know, it's just like kids. This is the way I want you to look at it with parenting is He's sitting here, and we're just having a conversation. Somebody does this, and he's like, get the hell out of here. You know, and you're like that. Shh, ah, leave it. No. Sit. Good. But you see how fast it turns him around, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's not anything really a lot different from the flat collar. It's just sit, it's sitting p differently, and it's applying a little bit more pressure for control. And that's the main... Shh. And that's the main difference. I mean, honestly, if you were to say like, okay, how did you get him to go from really reactive to not? It would just be a little bit of, a little bit more pressure. That's it. Okay, but he has a good boy, right? So it's not really a, so I'm just going through the process of trying to figure out <clears throat> the stem of what we're dealing with, right? And so for him, you could tell that it's not so much fear. It's just, I don't know what else to do, which is great because that's like the easiest type of reactivity that we can deal with. Right? So all you got to do, step in, say, nope, stop. What are you doing? And then he'll go, oh. <laughs> so that's what he did with me. And I judged it. And I didn't, you know, when I gave you that other leash, I'm just thinking on the fly of like, what's going to work best here? And then I started seeing his eyes and I started to see his tail and I started to see his body language. And then I started realizing he just, he, he didn't want to bark at me. He just didn't know what else to do. <clears throat> so a lot of the success that we're going to be working with is going to come from you. And you're going to be the primary person that's going to be the gatekeeper of whether this is good or bad for him. I mean, it's going to be either successful or not, but it's not going to have anything to do with me or him. It's going to be you. And I'm going to go through that whole process with you. That's why we have a lot of sessions to work on it. Um, and the other thing that I, I do want to point out too is when I do a lot of behavior modification work, if you were to look at if you were to take a test of the behavior modification of the work that I've done in the last five years and where those dogs are at, will have no reflection on me and what I've ever done with the dog. Because what I just did in front of you, I'm done. So there's a difference between sustainability and behavior training and obedience training. If you're, if you're not sustaining obedience training in the future, that may have something to do with the foundation that was built. The sustainability and behavior modification, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. That's done and over with. We, we're, we're, we're on to a new level. So now my point is, is like, I want to put everything with you. Okay. Um, Anywho. <laughs> so we're going to do some healing stuff, which means basic leash pressure. So I'm going to keep him on my left side to stay consistent. And um, very basic, very basic. I'm going to come out. Same body, heal. Good boy. Heal. Good boy. Good. Zamboni, heel. Good heel. Heel. Yes. Good boy. Heel. Yes. Sit. Go ahead. So that was perfect. Back and forth. Um, at this stage, in the foundational stages, I'm looking at him. I'm talking to him a lot because um, he's never done it. So I'm, I'm being very holding your hand and I'm letting him know what I want him to do. So I come out. I say heel. If he doesn't turn with me, he gets that little tug on the leash. And if he does, yay, good heel. And you saw it there a couple times where he understood mm -hmm. exactly what I wanted him to do. And that will immediately help with any reactivity or 
anxiety that he'll have on the leash because you're giving him a sit. Good. You're giving him a job. And the other thing what you just saw me do that a lot of dog owners don't is after I healed him around, I asked him to sit because it's kind of like completes the healing terminal there, if you will. And so when I asked him to sit and I'm having a conversation with you, that doesn't mean he can get up when he wants. So that's part of the structure I'm talking about. The little things like that make a really big picture for him. So me as a handler, if I say, hey, do this, and then four seconds later he gets up and does something else and I don't care, how good does that make me with consistency and being a good leader? Little things like that. Okay, um, I'm going to have you give it a go. Okay, do you have any questions? So that's where you give him a little pop on the leash. Okay, so as soon as he starts pulling, I can. Yep. No. Leave it. Leave it. Hey, leave it. Put a touch. Good. Shh. No. Good. Go touch. Good girl. Good job. Good job. Now, do you have food with so you? Now, what I'm going to do is, so for me, the, the treats, if I did the treats in the beginning, they would be more of a Band-Aid because I wouldn't know if he's paying attention to me or he's paying attention to the treats. Yeah. Where what I just did is I said, okay, you have the ability to ignore the other dog for the first time ever. Great. I'm excited about that. Definitely still reactive, not out of the woods, but definitely better, right? So now what I can do is take my cake and eat it too and have my cherry on top where I'm like, all right, now you're next to another dog where normally you could not do that. Now I'm going to take out some food to make it a lot better. But I don't want to bring the food out first because then I don't know for sure if he's accepting her in his space or not. Because he's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so the question would then come up in my head if I was listening to what I just said then why didn't you just use the food in the beginning if it works so well? Is because again, it doesn't tell me that if I took the food out, I can organically just between me and him work out the situation and the reactivity with her. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people make that mistake and that's why the sustainability of the reactivity doesn't last because as soon as the food goes, then whatever. So I'm going in like organically to like see what's going on. Good, and then Zach, go ahead and heal by again. Good, now what you can do is, so see how he's making the decision not to react, which is great. Do you have a treat? So just put your, do, do one of these. <laughs> Good. And then Zach, just get a little closer. Absolutely. Good. And then you can start marking this. Good, uh, the focus command or whatever. Good focus. Good job. And then what I like to do is actually take the food, make him see the other dog with, you know, and then, Good. And then bring him back down. Good. He's looking at the other dog. He's also looking at the food. Sit. Yes. Good. Looking at the dog. Yes. Back to me. Wonderful.